arguably my absolute favorite thing about bass fishing is the fact that you have to be the bait growing up trout fishing it's all about you either put a gob of goo on a hook cast it out you let it sink to the bottom and you sit and wait or you troll you just motor around the lake and then you just get to sit there and think about how cold you are the whole time and my favorite even back in just trout fishing days was throwing spinners and even to this day one of my favorite ways if i go salmon fishing is to throw spinners because i have to make this presentation and i have to bring this lure back and that is the predominant thing that grabbed me about bass fishing was that first bass we encountered when we were 13 the way that thing fought that had piqued my interest but as more and more as i got into bass fishing it was the interactiveness the, the immersiveness of you have to take this lure and all the lures do something a little bit different so you have to take this lure and you have to make it do a thing <laughs> to get a bass to react that one-on-one -on -one aspect of this sport is absolutely my favorite thing i wanted to take some time this morning to kind of just go into that presentation Caden, very critical critical things in bass fishing the most important part about them is when you do something that gets bit being able to replicate what you just did so understanding what you did if you paused a bait if you sped up a bait if you got hung up for a second and kind of wiggled it whatever you were doing when that fish hit you have to be able to rewind that in your mind and do it again and if you can do that you'll start getting bit more often you'll get more consistent in your fish catches so when it comes to bass bait some of these baits are designed to kind of do a lot of the work for you for instance like your chatter bait you throw it out and as it's coming back in it's shaking and vibrating and that skirt's dancing and all kind of stuff going on but you can still impart action on that as you're retrieving that bait instead of just winding it back in every once in a while pause it speed it back up change that cadence up a little bit maybe burn the thing back in maybe crawl it along the bottom you know reel just slow enough that it makes that blade work and even though this bait has a designed action to it you can do things to manipulate that action one of the most important factors when bass fishing is something that you're going to do typically is going to cause a bass to strike and all this equipment is designed to work you know together the line the rod the reel so the speed of your reel is going to have an impact on how fast your retrieve is the sensitivity in your rod is going to have an impact on what you're feeling from that bait and your line is it have stretch no stretch stretch that's going to affect the sensitivity that you're getting back as well a braided line might kill your feedback on some of these baits fluorocarbon line is going to have more sensitivity in it and then a monofilament it might take some of the action away from a bait just by the fact that it's got so much stretch to it there's all factors that come into play i'm not saying that if you're not using the right line you're not going to catch a fish that's just ridiculous i can throw this on braid fluorocarbon or monofilament and i'm going to catch fish on it it just might impact whether or not you detect that strike when a fish does strike. Anytime you're fishing a lure, you want to just make sure you're keeping contact with that bait. And even if you kill it, when you start to continue that retrieve, that's the instant usually something's going to smack you. I watched an eight and a half pounder on Lake Goodwin behind my lipless crankbait and me pooping my pants looking down at it. I don't know why, but it was getting so close to the boat. I'm like, if this fish is going to take this bait, it's got to do it now. I stopped the bait and I saw the fish turn and I was like, he saw the boat. And then I, my, my rod tip boat over a little bit and I ended up catching that fish. It was a beast. Eight and a half pounder. I mean, come on. In Washington State, that's just an absolute monster. You don't know that there might be a fish behind your bait at any given time on a retrieve. So having a pause, doing some little, maybe a little couple twitches with your rod tip, speeding it up for a second, all things that could help that fish make that decision to, to strike your bait. You know, a lot of guys like to run trailers off of these. I don't, I like to run a trailer hook. I've caught a lot of fish on the trailer hook. They short strike my bait. Trailer off the back, if it's not the right type of trailer, it can take action away from this blade. It will bog the bait down a little bit and it can take action off that blade if you're going to run a trailer off it and not a trailer hook then you want to make sure that you're running something that's got that's very lively has some good action to it some of the big paddle tail bait they'll work it's a completely different kind of action it slows down the blade but then you also got that paddle tail at the other end so you're kind of getting double they will work I just prefer to throw these. Um, it's just a what's called a bladed jig, and I fish them kind of that way. You know, I'll get a cast out there. I like to let it sink, count to three or five, depending on the depth of water I'm in. 
I always start with a, a bit of a yank just to get any grass off it or get that blade going. And then I just like a slow, steady retrieve. But the reason I don't really run a trailer, if I kill this bait, it's sinking. And it's gonna go quick like a jig. So I can adjust the depth really fast. I can bottom kind of bounce it so it's coming. I, I kill it, it hits the bottom. I kick it back off and stir up that sediment. If it's smallmouth, different cadence. Y'all you know, make a pretty long cast. With smallmouth, one thing, when you're using reaction baits, unless you're fishing docks, you know, long cast can really help you. And then I just want kind of a medium retrieve where uh, it's just kind of a steady wind. I might slow that retrieve down, but I'm not going to stop it. For whatever reason, with largemouth, if you pause a bait in front of them, they're more apt to grab it. But with smallmouth, they'll kind of turn off. Smallmouth is better to speed that bait up. As I'm reeling, I'll just slow that down to just enough to keep that blade moving, and then I'll speed it back up, and then I'll just enough. So I'll constantly kind of vary like that until the fish tells me what they like. If I speed it up and they hit it, chances are I'm going to start more of a steady retrieve uh, if I'm fishing for smallmouth. Largemouth, more often than not, they are going to hit a bait if it pauses. That's just always something to keep in mind. So going from that to a spinner bait, very similar where it's a cast and retrieve bait, you know, what they call a reaction bait. And what I'm going to do with a spinner bait is same thing i'm going to throw it out as i'm bringing it back though you stop that spinner bait those blades flash 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 it's really cool and that thing when it's dying i've caught largemouth on this thing pitching and flipping it where i'll just kick it out by a piece of cover and i'll just let it sink and then i'll pick it up and i'll let it sink and more often than not they'll hit that thing on the fall it's pretty much a chunk and wine bait cast retrieve cast retrieve but again during that retrieve you want to be mindful of how fast are you turning that reel handle what is the gear ratio on that reel 6.2 6 6.4 to 1 reels are pretty much a do everything reel that's a pretty good all-around gear ratio to have in a bait caster So I know if I'm just keeping a steady retrieve, that bait's, you know, running it, just running along. If I want to, when that bait hits, I can let it sink, count it down, depending on my depth. If I want to go halfway down the water column or all the way to the bottom. And then again, same way I started, I always want to hit it and just get any junk off those blades. Those blades will spin very easily. I can just crawl that thing, you know, so I can reel very slowly and keep that thing deeper. If smallmouth fishing, and it does work for largemouth, but mostly for, for smallmouth fishing, I'm gonna want this bait running higher in the water column, almost subsurface. Kind of keep my rod tip up a little higher, because remember, your rod acts like a steering wheel. It has an effect on where your bait is in the water. I'll get that rod tip up a little higher, and I'll keep it just subsurface, you know, may, maybe make a wake on the surface, or I'll just keep a nice, quick, steady retrieve, you know, coming back to the boat. If I'm smallmouth fishing with a spinnerbait, the only thing I'm gonna do is slow it down, speed it up. Slow it down, speed it up. I'm not gonna pause it. I don't know why, but for some reason on reaction baits like that, and it's my own personal experience, if you kill it in front of a smallmouth, they go, they're like, something's up. But if you speed it up, they're almost like, hey, where are you going? Smallmouth have just more of an attitude about them. And if they see the thing getting away, I think they take it personally because <laughs> more often than not, they're gonna take off. And again, with smallmouth, if you're retrieving and you see or feel a fish miss your bait, speed that thing up. Oh, I'm telling you, they're going to spin around and come back and smash it. So now I don't know if you would call these big glide baits a reaction bait or a finesse bait. Honest to goodness. I mean, how something this big brick of a bait can be considered a finesse bait. But you work them so slow and so methodically, heave these things out, and it's just a kind of a, a lopey, you know, one, two, three. That cadence, it's just different. You want that bait to just kind of do its little side-to-side -side thing maybe kind of die and slide down in the water column a little bit depending on the style but just that easy back and forth if a fish gets behind it you know maybe a couple quick pops maybe just killing it that's something that's up to the fish and the fish are going to have to let you know by reacting what they prefer you know that stuff that you just got to get out there and try out these things are their own separate beast their own set of gear i mean look at that handle <laughs> 
big heavy line, it's big heavy rods, it's big heavy everything, but they are absolutely epic at catching fish. And the more you get into them, you can get addicted to these things and, and that'll be all you ever want to throw again. I just grew up throwing all this stuff and I like throwing all this stuff. I caught a six and a half pounder on a drop shot. Last week I was just as happy as if I had caught it on this. So to me, I just love the fact that these things are doing what they're doing to our sport, just turned into their own entity. I really like this stuff. I wish I threw them more, but I just like throwing everything. I'm just a fun fishing, junk fishing for the most part. That's how I like to spend my time. I do develop patterns when I'm out on the water. I do go through the process of breaking down the water. I will get on a single bite and stick with it all day. I don't care what that bite is. I don't care if it's a spinnerbait bite, a swim bait bite, a jig bite, a flip and pitch and bite. Once I determine a bite and I can stick with it all day, a pattern, then I'm good. But I like all the baits, so I don't think I could honestly pick a favorite bass bait. Now I went over to this a couple videos ago, but these soft jerk baits or, or jerk baits in general, it's a completely different thing. Now the soft jerk bait, like I have tied on here, this guy is a sinker. So it's got a lot of salt content in it. It's gonna sink and kind of go down in the water column. I'm gonna throw it out there. I'm gonna let it sink. On that initial sink, fish can pick it up. Dead sticking is a term used for not moving your bait at all. You're just letting something sit there. And then every once in a while, you're kind of checking it. Fish will pick up bait. As much as I love cadence and, and casting and presentations, there is a, a way where you can and put a bait out and if you did absolutely nothing to it eventually possibly a fish is going to come pick that bait up closer it is to cover the closer it is to a target the more apt that's going to happen but for the most part most of these baits you have to do something to them to impart a strike but with a soft jerk bait get it out i'm gonna let it sink count it down i got the wind at my back right now which is not ideal because i'm catching up to the bait as it's sinking but once it's out there it's just I'm gonna do a couple twitches. I'm gonna let that thing sink again. Now, the one thing that I forgot about uh, to talk about in the jerkbait video was twitches to pauses. That is the key to jerkbaits is, do I wanna twitch it once? Do I wanna twitch it twice? Couple quick ones. Do I wanna twitch that bait three times? And three is about the max I'll ever go. I'm, I'm never gonna just sit there and go jerk, 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 and make that thing jerk like four or five times. You know, one, two, pause, one, two, three, pause. That's typically the most popular cadence in fishing a jerk bait. A one, two, pause, one, two, three, or a one, two, pause, one, two, pause. Getting to some rhythm like that. The key is how many times you jerk it and what is the length of the pause on these baits. You don't get that answer until a fish gives you that answer. You know, I've had situations where I was fishing a jerk bait and I'm going along, you know, normal. I'm, I'm hitting it, I'm bringing it. And then something happened and caught my attention. I was like, what the heck is that? And I'm looking down and all of a sudden, thunk, I feel the fish take the bait. And I go, whoa, that playing it back in my mind again, that bait sat for about five seconds. So from then on out, guess what I'm doing? I'm throwing that bait out, I'm gonna jerk it. I'm gonna count to five, you know, one, 1,000, two, 1,000, up to five, 1,000 to let that bait sit because what one bass does in a given lake, more bass will do. And if that five second pause is what caused that fish to strike, then the next fish is more likely to strike on the same length of pause or even longer, you know, let it sit, count to 10, count to seven. But that's all stuff you gotta play around with. That'll either drive you nuts in bass fishing or that's absolutely, you're gonna love it. So a lot of trout guys that I've taken out, they're just, it's easy to get overwhelmed because when you're trout fishing, you're either bait fishing on the bottom, you're trolling, or you're throwing some type of lure. If I get it, guys out, trout fishing guys, and they are they like throwing spinners and stuff, it's a much easier transition and easier for them to understand. With bass, that bait has to do something that's gonna cause that bass to react. Okay, so I'm getting now into jigs, flipping, pitching, and if you've watched my videos, and I appreciate everybody that does, but if you watch them, you, what you'll notice is some of my favorite ways to fish uh, once we get post-spawn is pitching, flipping, jigs. Um, I just love that close quarter combat stuff. So when I'm throwing a jig, if I'm not casting it at something, okay, if I'm not throwing out to a target or throwing out to an area on the bottom, then I'm looking for visible cover to target. And like this little lay down sticking out right here is a, is a prime example. If I'm going to fish this, then I'm gonna get that jig right in there, right on that thing. 
and all I'm doing is letting it get to the bottom kind of shaking it and I'm gonna bring it out and do it again I'm in really shallow water right now so I can quickly maneuver this thing this particular little log right here if you look at it has a massive amount of branches and the stuff on top always breaks off first because it's in the Sun it's getting beat on by the weather and that's the stuff that's gonna disappear but there could be just as many branches underneath the water so you just want to work the whole thing working a piece of cover over like this it's really similar you're just basically pitching but you're using a jig instead of a weedless pitching rig if i wanted to fish this grass it'd be basically the same concept i'm just going to pitch it and the big difference is exposed hook you get a little bit of a weed guard but it's not much so exposed hook on a jig where in a pitching rig i don't deal with that exposed hook so i can throw it into the nastiest stuff available in that jig video i went over how i'm working that jig out if i'm casting at a given area i'm just throwing it out if there's a stump out there or something like that then i'm going to get that jig out a little bit past it or right to it and i'm going to work it through it if it's a hard bottom area same thing i'm going to get it out there and i'm going to work that jig through it in the cold water below 50 degree water i'm doing like i did in the video where i'm just kind of bouncing that thing through i just want it to kind of shake its way through all that uh, debris on the bottom when that water temperature gets above 50 degrees if you're fishing for largemouth then those other techniques will work as far as you know hopping the jig up a little bit or dragging it and stopping it dragging it and stopping it versus just sitting there and shaking it there you can kind of vary it up and speed it up a little bit once we get a little bit warmer water with small Smallmouth, that's a different story. I don't think the smallmouth care. You can throw those things out there, or a big heavy jig head with a hula grub on it, and you can drag those things and drag them, and that really turns the smallmouth on. Depending on the species you're fishing for, and depending on the technique, it comes down to cadence. It, what are you doing? And you gotta vary it up. If you're fishing a bait a certain way, and you're not getting bit, and you're an hour into your day, well, do something different, because you're wasting your time. Obviously, those fish have told you they don't like whatever you're doing they've spoke by not reacting to your bait so change your cadence to get them to react to your bait and when they do react you've got to hit that in your memory bank and you got to replay okay, what was i doing so many different combinations of what you can do with these baits it's unbelievable remembering that series of events is going to more apt to get you bit again because that bass reacted the next bass could react the same way you're never going to catch every bass in the lake you're never going to get all of them to react and if you watch any tournament more often than not multiple techniques were used amongst the top 10 anglers they weren't all doing the exact same thing you know a prime example of this is the amount of times that I've been in the front or back of a boat and my buddy and I are fishing the exact same bait but one of us is kicking the other one's butt and that is classic cadence that is a classic example of one of them is doing something that that fish like and the other one isn't they're put in an action or they're doing something to their bait that is making that fish react you know I was catching fish and my buddy was struggling I'm like here man I rig up a jig I put the same trailer on I trim it the same way it's it's they're identical like twins put this on all right start throwing it throw where i'm throwing i would stop fishing and throw in there throw in by that log and trying to help but there was something that they were either working it a little quicker a little faster not as fast there's something they were doing so getting back to your mental the mental aspect of doing this is remembering what you did and then trying to replicate that as best you can and it it's going to be so impactful on the consistency of your fish catches it'll blow your mind so that is a big, big deal in bass fishing is remembering that cadence, repeating that cadence. All right, if you watch my videos, you've seen this before. <laughs> Just a pitch and flipping rig. You use that piece of soft plastic. You keep it completely weedless, good half ounce weight. Uh, depending on the cover or the vegetation, I can go down to a, a quarter ounce. I may have to go up to a one or a one and a half ounce. So that's all stuff you got to play with. Where cadence comes in to these, these are almost more important that you're picking your cover apart and you're picking your cover targets correctly and i'm going to go over that in an upcoming video the differences and what to look for in breaking down cover but this guy right here the cadence is how you let it sink and then what you do once it hits the bottom i can take this bait and i can pitch it in here and i can let it sink to the bottom and i can just sit there and wait and hope that one day a bass comes in and sees it and goes hey what's this and eats it but that is not how bass fishing works 90 percent of the time you have to do something so on a pitching 
flipping bait. I'm gonna get in to a good looking spot. I'm gonna try to make as quiet an entry as possible with that bait. It's important that it's not kaboosh and just going in the water really hard. This time of year, once those frogs get crazy and are active and all summer and stuff, not as big a deal. And, and there are times I think a, a splash actually will benefit you. But in the cold early season, as quiet as possible. I just like to be as quiet as possible. Your cadence with this is going to be when you put it out there, slowing it down before it gets to the water and letting it go in quietly. The second part of your cadence is going to be once that bait gets to the bottom, lifting it up, letting it hit the, the surface, whatever you went through, and then letting it back down, up and down. And how fast you do that is your cadence for the most part on, this, on these baits. So getting it at a nice quiet pitch, getting it to go through the cover, letting it sink to the bottom, pick up because a fish could have picked it up on that initial fall, lift it up, set it back down. Now, what you don't want to do is be going doing, 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 you know, and really ramming that thing around in there. You can lift it quicker up to the stuff and then drop it back down, you know, that's okay. Or you can slow that down and really slowly pick it up till it touches. And then using your rod, you can lower it down slowly back down to the bottom you know that's your cadence that's how you can manipulate this bait you can lift it up till it touches the whatever that canopy cover is and then just let it fall to the bottom that's typically what i'll do once the water warms up so i'll lift it up i'll let it hit that that uh, these reeds that i'm fishing right here and then i'm going to let it fall back down late april and on i'm going to pick it up and let it fall pick it up and let it fall but right now how cold it is i'll go ahead and be a little bit more interactive with that bait where i'm going to let it find its path through it goes to the bottom i'm going to pick it up i'm going to set it back down i'm going to pick it up with the rod and i'm going to keep contact with that bait the whole way down and set it back down on the bottom once it warms up i don't care if it falls on its own my job is to lift it and make it touch the top or just kind of hop it up off the bottom you know that's another cadence aspect with these is you can get it out into the stuff let it get to the bottom and then you can just kind of pop it like you would a jig get that thing to just kind of hop up off the bottom the cadence aspect of pitching and flipping is you want to control the entry to the water and then you want to control what that bait's doing once it's down there on the bottom or make five presentations lowering it myself and then make five presentations where i'm just letting the thing free fall is it's that quick you can decide you know and if a fish reacts then you know that they prefer one way over another the fish have so much of a say in all of this basically you're coming to an agreement with the fish <laughs> that's kind of the way i look at it you guys are deciding that okay i'll give it to you this way and the fish is like all right i'll bite it i just love it it's so interactive there's so much stuff a lot of times i think the old adage was that the baits are designed to catch fishermen not fish because if you get your cadence right and you get your presentation correct you're going to catch fish almost irregardless of the bait except i do put some emphasis on color so just remember no matter what lure you're using in bass fishing you have to be the bait you have to impart action on that bait you have to change things up until you get a fish to react there is something that is that is going to get those fish to react so you got to play around with cadence you got to play around with your presentations until you kind of figure that out and that is to me what makes bass fishing so much fun because there's just absolute multitude of ways you can do that with every single bait the action of the bait is important i am not taking anything away from the baits the action in and of itself of these baits are what get them bit but what can increase the bites what can increase your consistency in catching bass are these little things that you're doing to them little modifications to your retrieve modifications to your presentation all of these things come together to help you you know that bait being designed to do what it does and the nuances that you're putting into it that is all the stuff that that really will ramp up your fish catches and keep you consistent on a bite for the majority of the days you know keep that in mind when you're out and when you're messing around with this stuff my rule of thumb on baits and cadence is typically if i've fished through good stuff i'll give it either 30 minutes or i'll give a bait 10 casts to get bit or not get bit and then i'm gonna start switching things up i may come back to that bait but i'm gonna start to try other things 
things because chances are that bait's not the bait for the day. So keep that stuff in mind when you're out here doing this and hopefully it'll have a, a significantly positive impact on your bass fishing experience. So when I'm throwing these swim jigs, I kind of run two different options. I got a long, narrow one you know, with a paddle tail swim bait for a trailer. And then a shorter one I do with a uh, Rage Menace. So you see the difference in length. Same weight, same exact swim jig, but the trailers are different. So it gives a different profile, but also I reel this one a lot slower. It doesn't take a lot of water movement to make that little boot tail do its thing just kind of kick so i can really slow my retrieve down adjusting my cadence on this bait where with this little guy i like this one I, i'll burn it more and i'll twitch my rod tip a lot more to make it kind of dart you know you get a lot more action out of these legs and it's a lot easier to get that action more apt to switch it kill it jerk it back up and really just make this thing kind of zip around same bait but just two completely different ways and two completely different cadences that you can use to work them warmer water colder water again that just goes back to the experiment with your retrieve and, and the cadence of your bait and what you're doing with that bait When you feel that thunk and you see your line shooting towards deeper water, usually a good sign. Oh yeah. Five thirteen. 